Okay, we are rolling. Welcome YouTubers. Uh, this is not going to be one of your typical videos like with me preaching or with me um, out, out uh, street preaching. Uh, it's going to be kind of a boring video, but this is about all I'm able to do lately. Uh, those of you that haven't been keeping up, I've been very busy lately. I had a um, very big, massive attack from the enemy on my life which uh, thankfully right now it's over and in fact because of this attack my life is better than it was before so that's 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 just the way it goes with the enemy I mean uh, if you're being attacked by the enemy and you just tough it out you will end up being better you know if you if you go towards God if you go more, more towards God when you get attacked by the enemy you come out being better and uh, it's just another, uh, you know, more proof of that. But I have been very busy lately. Um, number one, I started to homeschool my kids. And um, it's uh, taken a lot more time uh, than I thought it was going to do. Uh, particularly when you just get started, there's an adjustment period. So I just had to, you know, spend a lot of time working on that, tweaking that, you know, just sort of getting that to where... You know, there's kind of a rhythm to it, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's being done in a way that's uh, you know, beneficial towards everybody. Um, but yeah, that's just taking a lot of time. And another thing, my work schedule. My work schedule has been pretty crazy lately. Um, it's you know, 11-hour shifts. And some of you may say, well, hey, you know, an 11-hour shift's no big deal. Well, this is an 11-hour shift in 90-degree heat. And some of you might say, well, an 11-hour shift in 90-degree heat is no big deal. Well, this is an 11-hour shift in 90-degree in heat and high humidity. So that's a whole different ball game right there. You know, we're not talking about a dry heat here when you're talking about, you know, the South. So, I mean, an 11-hour shift will just completely drain you. So you can imagine, you know, how you're going to feel after an 11-hour shift at that and this oppressive heat, and um, you know, when I finally get a day off, I mean, I just, I just veg out. But I've been wanting to do this video for a while, and uh, sorry about the long intro, but um, one of my videos, all of a sudden, started getting a lot of comments and um, a lot of uh, a lot of dislikes lately, and it's the one I did, and I called it make America straight again and uh, if you go to the uh, street preaching clip playlist you can find it but it, it's been getting a lot of views uh, it's kind of uh, evened out now but it got a lot of views when it first came you know, uh, a few months ago and actually been out since last year but all of a sudden it popped up and people started watching it and started leaving nasty comments and started leaving dislikes um, <clears throat> so One comment in particular uh, caught my attention because it was someone who left a respectful comment and it wasn't like, okay, I like what you're doing or, you know, you're a pathetic human being and you're completely stupid and I hope you die soon. It wasn't like that. It was very respectful. It sounded like it was coming from the other side and uh, he had some questions. and. Um, So I said, um, you know, he left a, like a long message on my, uh, you know, in the comments section asking these questions, and uh, I asked him would it be okay to do a video response, and uh, you know he was he was fine with that. So this, that's basically what this is. is I'm going to take these three questions <clears throat> and answer them right now in this video. Now I wanted to do this video uh, a month or more ago. Um, but like I say, you know, what happened happened, and you know, these things certainly, you know, you don't see them coming, but when they come, you got to take care of it. You know, sometimes you uh, charge forward and attack the enemy, and sometimes you circle the wagons and defend yourself. So that was definitely one of the times I needed just to defend myself. But um, I feel like I got enough time right now to where I can at least do this, and I wanted to put out a video. I mean, I know people are still concerned, they haven't seen the video from me for a while. 
you know, different things will be going on with the channel, and I'm trying to fix things. I'm trying to get things back to normal. Um, but, you know, just to let you know, I'm fine. I'm still a street preacher. I'm still a preacher. I will get back into that. Uh, the street preaching may go on hold for a while. I mean, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. But it's very important that I get this homeschool done and that, you know, I get around to where I'm not working so much at my job. Um, I, I feel like God's telling me, you know, you need to do this now. You know, you need to go ahead and, you know, make a lot of money. For those of you who don't know, I'm self-funded. I don't, there's no uh, right-wing billionaire somewhere trying to fund me. Okay, I'm completely self-funded. So, um, if I do get a chance like this, you know, where I can make a lot of money, so I can get out there more, I want to do that. But he left me some questions, and if I was true, and I was a very good editor, I would put these questions so that you could read them. But as people who have watched my channel for a while know, I'm not a good editor. So what I am going to do is, I'm going to read these a couple times. And I will print these questions um, in the description box for this video. So if you want to look at them later. But he left me three questions, and uh, I'm just going to go through these and answer them. So, his first question is, can you provide irrefutable evidence that proves that your beliefs are 100% correct in a way that no other religion in the world would be able to apply the same method and achieve the same results? And um, this is a common question, and, it, and it's a good question. It's, um, what's so different about Christianity? You know... You got Christianity over here, you got Islam over here, you got Hinduism over there in India, you got Buddhism over in Asia. I mean, what's, you know, why is Christianity so different? And, uh, you know, he's asking for irrefutable proof, you know, that, that Christianity is, is different and that if you applied it to a same religion, would you achieve the same results? And um, apologists love this question. What's so different about Christianity? You know, you know what, what, what makes Christianity so different than all the other religions? I mean, aren't they all trying to achieve the same thing? Uh, Christianity is very different. Uh, number one, when you're talking about other religions, you're talking about works-based salvation. And what that means basically is the other religions are telling you your good works need to be better than your bad works. Okay, you do bad things, you know, you've done bad things. So now what you've got to do is you've got to get these good works to go above the bad things. And maybe, just maybe, you'll be saved if you do it this way. So that's, that's every other religion. In fact, that's some parts of the false Christianity that you find, like in Mormonism or, J, you know, or Jehovah Witnesses. You know, they're saying, hey, you've got to get up there. You've got to do, you've got to do good. You've got to get out there and work. Biblical Christianity is completely different. Biblical Christianity says there's nothing you can do to make up for these bad works. These sins that you've done, you can't make up for them. It's impossible. You know, your best works are as filthy rags to God, the Bible says in Isaiah. So... <clears throat> What you're talking about with biblical Christianity is that God says, okay, you can't do this. But Jesus Christ came and he took that penalty for you. So now because of that sacrifice that he did, you can accept that and you can be right with God. Now some people say, well, if you just believe in Jesus, all your sins past, present, and future are forgiven. That's not true. Once you get the bad things taken care of, once you accept Jesus, accept what he did for you on the cross, and then he was ro rose again on the third day, once you accept that, okay, you're, and you repent, your sins are forgiven. Okay, you got a clean slate with God, and that's a great feeling. You know, I've seen it many a time, you know, people... They, they, they repent, and they cry out to God, and God saves them. 
So you can you can cover the you know you can get those sins taken care of. You have to repent. Now some people think that repentance is just saying, "Hey, I did wrong, and I need forgiveness," and that's that's a good thing. But there's another part to repentance, and that is you change your mind about sin. You don't want to sin. You do everything you can not to sin. And the Bible is is has many references to this. You know. Paul says in Romans 6, you know, shall we continue to sin that, that, that grace may increase? God forbid. How can we, who are dead to sin, live any longer therein? So obviously, when you get saved, you don't go back to your sin. And we have that gift of grace. And that gift of grace is so powerful in that not only do you get forgiveness of sins, but you get the ability to not sin. So that is the main biggest difference right there that biblical Christianity has been against any other religion in the world is that you can't overcome those bad things that you've done in your life but you can repent and get right with God and uh, you know you can get those sins taken care of erased completely okay so number two if you cannot okay now these questions are assuming that I can't answer the former question. But I'm going to answer those anyway after I take some water. I'm going to answer them anyway. If you cannot, but of course I just did, can you provide an irrefutable secular reason that the LGBT community is something evil and should be punished? Um, I don't really know that I would agree with uh, I agree that LGBT should be punished. I really don't know that I would exactly uh, word it that way. I do think they need to be converted. Um, now, evil, I like a good definition of evil. Now, as for me, he's talking about, you know, a secular reason that is evil. So, how do we how do we define that? I mean, biblical evil is of course you know sin, um, you know not following God's commands. Uh, so when we go to secular, though, I mean, what what exactly do we mean by that? Uh, I will say that the LGBT uh, community is uh, has done things. I mean, you can just look at this video. You know that um, I got these questions on is there's all kinds of comments here that are not only you know talking bad about me or saying bad things about me I don't really care but they're trying to get my channel uh, deplatformed they're trying to get me deplatformed and that is all over the LGBT community is they go out and they try to get people deplatformed. They're trying to get people, uh, you know, and they'll go and uh, they'll make calls to TV shows where somebody says something that, you know, against uh, what they believe. And, you know, they'll try to get that show taken off the air. Works very dry all of a sudden. And I've even seen them go so far as to you know, talk about a movie not being LGBT enough. So they just bully people. They just bully people and they try to get people deplatformed if they don't believe everything that they believe. And um, that's evil in the sense that that's against our Constitution. That's against the Bill of Rights. Freedom of speech. Now, um, some people will say, well, you know, you're talking about freedom of speech. Does that mean someone can run into a crowded theater and yell fire and, you know, people run out and, uh, you know, people might get trampled or get hurt. Okay, that's not freedom of speech. Um, that's, uh, that's a felony. Okay, There's not, they're not the same. And my, my speech is not intended to hurt anybody. I've never advocated violence against anybody. In fact, I am very quick I am very quick to condemn violence against people. My 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 work, my preaching is 
it's kind of a tough love approach. It's kind of a harsh approach. But I want to see uh, people get saved. I want to see people, uh, you know, repent and cry out to God. And uh, I apologize for this. I don't know what's going on. Just drying out for some reason. But that's what I want to see. You know, I never condemn violence. You know, I always condemn violence. I never, I never say, well, we know, you know. And I know there's some preachers out there that do that, and they say, well, you know, the, the you know, I think they're talking about the shooting in Miami, and they said, um, <coughs> they said, well, that was a good thing, you know, and they shot up all those, all those homos in Miami. That was good. No, it wasn't a good thing. It was a horrible thing. It was a terrible thing. You know, I want to see um, homosexuals be converted and become straight. That's what I want to see. And, uh, you know, I got I got a sermon on that, you know, because I've had some homo, you know, homosexuals approach me and say, well, look, I asked God to change me, didn't change me. And, you know, my whole sermon was about that, why God didn't, you know, here's why God didn't change you. I'm not going to get into all that right now. But... <clears throat> You know, the whole LGBT thing, you know, and these pride parades and this sort of thing, um, it's just, it's not a good lifestyle. I want to see them get out of that lifestyle. Uh, you know, you want some facts, 40% suicide rate, you know, with uh, homosexuals and transgender. 20% uh, of transgenders who have their sex change uh, regret it. So if you're a transgender, you're you're playing Russian roulette with uh, with a five shot revolver and there's three bullets in it. So you're either going to regret it or you might commit suicide. And that grieves me. I don't want you know I don't want to see people you know um, commit suicide. That's a terrible thing. I believe uh, Robbie Zachariah said it said it best when. Uh, Someone asked him if suicide was a sin. He said, I wouldn't want to meet my maker after destroying something that was made in his image. And I think that's what we see here. Is I don't want, I don't want uh, people to commit suicide. I think it's a terrible thing. And the fact that you've got 40% in the LGBT community committing suicide, uh, that's a terrible thing to me. And some people said, well, you know, that's cause, cause of your preaching. Okay, I'm not telling people to commit suicide. I'm not telling people that. Um, I'm telling them they need to get right with God. They need to get right with God. And they can be converted. Okay, and um, you also got the low, the low, uh, you know, you got um, 20 years off of your life. And um, that's that's been documented. Uh, that was a study done by uh, the CDC, Center for Disease Control. Says that homosexual males live 20 years less than heterosexual males. I want them to get that 20 years. I don't want them to lose that 20 years. Um, so, like I say, that's a proven fact right there. And I've heard it's gotten lower, and I've heard that the suicide rate has gotten higher. But I don't have the facts on that. I just heard that secondhand. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to change what I've been saying about the numbers. Uh, when I see studies that have different numbers, I'll, I, you know, I'll change it. I'm willing to change that. I'm willing to be fat checked. Okay. And the third question, if it's no to both of these, but of course, you know, I've answered both of them uh, in the affirmative. Is it truly necessary for an ingrained part of people's identities to be suppressed? Okay. I think that what he's asking here. And, you know, um, I don't really want to say his name, but if I've misrepresented any of these questions, just let me know, and uh, I'll, try to get your, I'll try to get your questions answered. But what I take this to mean is um, somehow homosexuality is part of somebody uh, from birth. It's, it's, be it's become kind of a catchword to say, well, I was born this way. Okay? And, of course... I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. Um, I believe when you start going down that road into sin, um, not only do you 
want to sin more, but you bring on bigger sins. And if you do look into someone who's homosexual or lesbian or transgender, um, what you'll usually find is there was probably abuse in their in their early in their early life, their childhood, or maybe their teenage years. There was probably some kind of abuse, uh, maybe sexual, uh, some kind of um, issues with their father, whether their father wasn't there or their father was abusive. You'll find that part in their lives too, and um, you you will find sin. You will find sin. Uh, pornography. Pornography, you know, they may start out straight, watch pornography, and end up becoming a homosexual. And I'm not saying that's true for all cases. <clears throat> I'm not sure I want to bring in gener uh, generational curses in with this, but some people may say that, you know, if you have uh, um, ancestors that were gay, uh, somehow that might pass along to you. And I suppose there are some verses that support that. But I don't believe it's an ingrained part of people. Uh, for the simple reason, I know people who aren't gay anymore. If that's an ingrained part of them, and they get saved, and they become straight, then um, <clears throat> it sort of blows that theory out of the water. I mean, uh, last year, I preached with a guy who used to be a gay stripper. And um, there's a song that goes... It goes around the street preaching community. Uh, it's not okay to be gay. That was written by a guy who used to be gay, actually. And um, he heard some street preachers, and he got saved, and now he's straight. So there are people out there that are, that are ex-gay. They become straight. And one thing I wish the LGBT uh, community would do is support them in their decision and be tolerant like they say but you ask anybody who's ex-gay, they'll tell you that they were shunned and they had very violent reactions from the LGBT community when they came out and said, well, I'm not gay anymore. I'm straight now. So I, that's another reason right there that um, I just don't agree with the whole LGBT philosophy. Okay. So there's my answers. And um, I'm sorry. I do apologize to this person that left these questions. I do apologize it took me so long to actually give a video response. And of course, um, I'm looking forward to your answer. Uh, if you want to do a video response, you know, I want the link so uh, I can actually watch it. And if I've misrepresented any of these questions, just let me know. And um, I'll try to, you know, give you an answer uh, to the right question. But I felt like, you know, I got a gist of what these questions were asking, and I hope this has answered your question. And I do uh, want to commend you for coming to me in a, in a very uh, respectful uh, tone and wanting an intelligent discussion. This is the stuff I live for. I mean, I'll, I prefer to do this on the street and not by video, but um, that's what I want when I go out street preaching. Is I want to have discussions with people, and I want to I want to talk about what other people believe. You know, it's not all about, you know, I'm just going to beat you over the head with the Bible. Um, some people need that. But I want to talk about other people's beliefs and how they believe. Well, let, 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 me, let me ask you what you think about God. Uh, let me ask you uh, what you think about sin. You know, how can you make up for those things that you've done bad in the past? I want, I want, to, I want to ask those questions and, I, you know, I want people to answer them for me. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to cut this video off here. And those of you... My preaching career is not over. My street preaching is not over. It's just I'm taking some time out and getting some things straightened out. But um, believe me, I'm looking forward to uh, being out there again. And this is uh, EC Street Preacher, and I'm going to sign out for now.